Dams store the latent power of water and what creates the usable energy is its release and conversion from kinetic power into electrical energy. The equipment that does that is a turbine and generator. We visited one of the oldest turbine manufacturers in the world to take a look at the key to the world's greatest source of global renewable energy. The Lake District in the north of the UK is an area famed for its beautiful hills and lakes, not a region usually synonymous with heavy industry. But Kendal in the heart of the lakes is home to one of the oldest turbine makers in the world. Jilks has been based here since 1856 and has built turbines for clients all over the world, even installing one in Queen Victoria's Scottish home at Balmoral in 1895. Today they have an international order book and have annual sales of just over £40 million, so they certainly know a thing or two about power generation. The theory behind hydropower is that we ultimately harness the energy available in the water. That's both in terms of the pressure in the water and the flow rate or the movement of the water. Now, turbines fall into two categories, reaction and impulse. In a reaction turbine, the runner is fully submerged. It harnesses the energy of the water passing through the runner. That's both in terms of its pressure and the kinetic energy available. Impulse turbines are often used on high head or high pressure schemes. They'll take the available energy in the water, convert that into a high velocity jet, which then strikes the runner or wheel. Francis turbines are the most commonly used today and can provide power from a few kilowatts up to 800 megawatts. Deciding what kind of turbine is right for any given project is where experience counts and it also relies on a range of parameters. One of the problems that we face mainly on site is site access. Um, these sites are very remote and the powerhouse is usually located down by the river. The materials used in manufacture have to be of the very best quality because of the stresses involved. Our scope of supply uses a number of different materials mild steel, stainless steel and aluminium bronze. And our seals and bushes tend to use more exotic materials like composite materials. The turbine's original designs may be old, but research and development is still a very important part of their business. From an R&D perspective, one of the biggest challenges we have is validating any efficiency gains that we identify. We do that using CFD, which is Computational Fluid Dynamics, a simulation tool but also physical testing as well to fully validate that gain. Turbines can have a long lifespan and maintenance, particularly on the larger ones, can be expensive. Jilk's expertise is in such maintenance and modernising facilities. These machines worldwide, wherever they are, have been in for a very long time, over a hundred years in some instances. Recently we've carried out some upgrading work really of, of some equipment on a tea estate in Kenya where they have five machines of ours dating back to the 1920s. We haven't really carried out too much mechanically on the turbines, it's just an upgrade on the electrical side of the equipment where over a period of time the software etc has changed. It's probably gone from a mechanical governor for example to an electrical governor. The company seems to be in a good position with growing interest in hydropower as a clean sustainable energy. The sustainability of our planet is in everybody's best interest. Renewable energy plays a massive role in that and hydropower is a significant contributor both historically and moving forward to the future. Hydropower as an energy resource is not available for all. Generally, countries with mountains or large rivers are the ones that profit the most. And one of the world's leading research facilities into this area of technology is found in just such a region, close to Lake Geneva. Switzerland is well known as a great holiday destination for its skiing and climbing, but its unique topology and high rainfall also means it has a sustainable and reliable source of power water. Hydropower was once the lifeblood of the country, providing almost 90% of domestic electricity supply in the 1970s. Unsurprisingly, Swiss engineers are some of the best when it comes to design and research of dams, and their key research home is the Laboratory of Hydraulic Constructions, or LCH, part of the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Lausanne. 
This laboratory was created in uh, parallel with the development of water infrastructure in Switzerland, mainly construction of dams, but also, of course, uh, hydropower where it started about 90 years ago, the development of hydropower in Switzerland. Dams like these have been around for many years and some of them are suffering from maintenance issues or could benefit from newer technology. Rehabilitation is very important for our structures related to hydropower and flood protection. These infrastructures are aging and we have to rehabilitate it regarding security, energy production and also ecological rehabilitation. Dams are a huge energy resource, but this also means they're under huge pressure, which can take its toll. Reservoir sedimentation is a big issue regarding the sustainability of the water resources. So once we build a dam on the reservoir, we cut the flow of sediments and they settle down inside the reservoir, reducing storage and making that resource non-sustainable. And it's not just the dams themselves that can feel the pressure. Lake Kariba Dam on the border between Zambia and Zimbabwe is facing a problem that could have catastrophic consequences. Kariba Dam has a spillway which is um, situated quite high up, uh, very close to the crest. And it's, uh, these are huge openings. And then uh, when releasing water during floods, this creates a very compact jet. And this compact jet is falling down 120 meters. This jet, which has a huge power, has started to create uh, a scour hole. If the scour would become deeper, then there would be, uh, with time, a probability of the stability of the dam itself. The forces involved in a dam of Kariba size mean that using sensors to measure stresses is not an option, so LCH built a model. A combination of uh, physical modeling in the laboratory, which we have just behind us, and uh, with a numerical modeling we could find a solution which can guarantee that the uh, scour hole will sti be stabilized uh, in future and will not become more deeper. Dams have great energy potential, but they can also have a negative impact on the local ecology. When we build a dam, this becomes an obstacle for fish migration. Therefore, we have to install a fish pass which allows the fish again to migrate freely and reproduce in the upstream rivers. The International Commission on Large Dams lists over 58,000 dams around the world. As these get older and new ones are being built, the work of LCH will become ever more important. With hydropower, as with every other sustainable energy source, I guess, the larger the project seems to have larger returns, but are there more costs externally that are associated with that as well? Yeah, the question for a large hydro project is, uh, is, to, have the, is to mitigate the uh, environmental impact on the ecosystem. And uh, it's nice because for large projects you, you have the money to do that and to build, for instance, uh, fish ladder, fish lifts, and uh, to, uh, well, to improve the, the ecosystem uh, once uh, the project is built. And the question is more complicated for small hydro because you have small projects so uh, less money and uh, sometimes it's complicated to find uh, the money to build something for the fish, for instance. When you think about hydro power and you think about glaciers melting, global warming and so on and climate change, how will that affect the effect of hydropower for us as a, as a population? Well, in fact, it's a, a really important question for hydropower to be able to predict the climate change, predict uh, the modification of uh, water quantity in our reservoir, so we are really working on it. And what do you think are the biggest issues for hydropower? Is it water consumption? Is it our consumption of water? Do we need to change our lifestyles or can hydropower help us fulfill the potential and the future that we have as a population in this, in this world? One point uh, maybe for small hydro projects is, uh, is the idea to have more smart hydro network because uh, sometimes you have some uh, small, uh, small installation on existing infrastructure, for instance on drinking water networks, there is no impact on the environment and uh, you can also put this type of power plant on a wastewater network, on irrigation, artificial snow and uh, it could be nice to have a, a smart view uh, on, of the world picture to produce electricity uh, while consuming water and sometimes store it. So there you go. It's one of the most ancient forms of sustainable energy used all over the globe. And with smarter, 
innovative and more efficient technologies as well as storage, it seems that hydropower will continue to be an important supplier of energy well into the future. And we want you to be part of that future. Join our conversation on Twitter at CNBC Energy using the hashtag Sustainable Energy. Share your thoughts, ask us questions and we'll put them to our experts. Now in the next show we're going to be talking about biomass and the role that it has to play in a sustainable future. In the meantime, join us on Twitter and let's talk green. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Goodbye.